Just stop. Just put that cigarette out and just don't do it again. Just don't light another one. Although I know a lot of people can't do that, but um, they could try. But tapering doesn't help. So you just put it out and that be it. You leave it go. I tell them. I, I did stop for three months. And all smokers rationalize. We all find excuses to start again. And I happened to be down by the seashore and seeing this elderly lady uh, sitting on the porch, very elderly, smoking, and thought, oh, to heck with it. You know, she's, she's all right. She's not, you know, she seems perfectly healthy. You know, this was a, uh, observed all from a moving car. <laughs> and uh, started smoking again. I don't think people understand how hard it is to quit smoking. They look at alcoholics and think, you know, how tough it is for the drunk to give up his, his booze. But they look at somebody that smokes and they get um, very self-righteous. You know, like, well, what's wrong with you? Why can't you quit smoking? You know, what, what's your problem? It's, it's not like... Uh, deciding to go to the movies. I mean, it's really, really tough. What I found myself doing months after I had no longer smoked cigarettes was, this is when we were still letting people smoke in our home. Um, if a friend would toss a pack of cigarettes on the table, I'd be talking to him and I'd have one shaken out and I'd think, oh, where'd that come from? And have to stick it back in the pack. It wasn't the physiological addiction. It was the psychological addiction. It was just the trigger of seeing a pack of cigarettes laying there and um, without even thinking about it, it was so subliminal, I just shake one out and have it in my finger, fingers ready to light up. Um, and that took a long time to go away. I'd say that took almost a year for that to just leave me. Cigarette smoking is like any other habit that one develops over time, be it drugs, be it um, a way of interacting with your, your husband, your children, your family. It's something that gets integrated into your life and into your personality and your lifestyle. Becomes so much a part of it and you become so absorbed in it that without it, it's almost like a loss. You have to think in terms of what you will do to replace what you're losing. You don't say I'm never going to have another one. That's what I tried all the other times. You can't do that because suddenly the cigarette's your friend, and it's almost like I've told my friend I'm never, ever going to have him again. So I didn't say, I've, I've quit smoking. I'm never going to have another one. I couldn't say that. I said, I'm not going to have one today. And then my husband for Christmas bought me a fake cigarette, and it has a little filter on it, and that's lovely. <laughs> and when I get really nervous, I just hold it. And I don't use it as much now as I first did when I first started quitting. But it's, it's nice if you're at a bar and everyone's having a cigarette and you need something to do with your hands, you hold a cigarette while you talk. It's very natural. It feels very good. Can you think of anything that might make it easier for me? But you never listen to me. Well, you know, it's not as easy as you think, you know. It's... All right, I'll give you an example. My quitting smoking would be like me saying to you, you can never suck your thumb again. Okay? It's hard to stop something that you're used to doing. It's a habit. I like to think that I'll stop. I like to think that when I'm older, I won't smoke anymore. But then what's older? You know, I mean, everybody says, I won't smoke when I'm older. My mother's 44 and she's still smoking. And I don't want to be smoking when I'm 44. I think I'm, I'm going to stop when... Uh, I would like to stop maybe the next 10 years. I, I don't know. But I, I do not want to smoke for the rest of my life. But I don't know when I want to stop either. I still don't know how it happened. You know, one cigarette in 1943 started this.